the relationship between the performing arts programs on campus um, has been growing and getting stronger since I started here um, about five years ago. In my third year, uh, we created a new position, which was a joint appointment between the performing arts at CLA and the performing arts at NTID. One of the goals of it was to uh, continue to bring the two programs together. For these collaborative productions, when we work with uh, deaf actors and hearing actors together, one of the roles of the team, which I believe is, is so incredibly important, is the idea of the ASL coach. My responsibility is to read the script and then figure out how to translate the script clearly for a deaf audience. I mean, I have to figure out the visuals, the concept, and everything that's within the language of the script to make it clear. I support the interpreters, I support the performers who have to sign. I make sure that their sign language is clear and fluid for a deaf audience. A big part of American Sign Language is expression, mouth movement, um, facial expression with masks, it's really tough to show hearing actors exactly how to express themselves in the way that they should in American Sign Language because we're losing half of ASL when your face is covered. ASL is a 3D language, meaning sign has movement, your body moves, um, and then being stuck in a box of digital land, it's a challenge. I mean, we can still make it work, but to be honest, you just, you lose a lot. The COVID-19 pandemic has was the entire reason that we picked this production. Um, and it was originally written in 2011 uh, as a stage play. And then when the pandemic happened um, last March, he rewrote the play for a third edition, which was meant to be done online. A lot of theaters had to quickly pivot to do online theater. And so he thought, if I can adapt this and make it easier for people, um, then you know, they don't have to fight against this new medium of trying to do digital theater. Like in any play, you have a limited amount of time where you typically have the cast get to know each other and they form a bond, a relationship. For this show, we're losing kind of that moment or it becomes harder because we're limited to being on Zoom and then once we're in person, we still have the rules of staying apart from each other. It's hard to create that bond. I think it's a really fun story. Um, you know, it has a, a, a big aspect of the show, which is about Dungeons and Dragons. And that's something that I, before picking the show, didn't know a lot about. So I've gotten to learn about that. And I think that there are a lot of students at RIT that are very much into Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and so I think that that game side of the show is really fun. I'm a geek, so within this play, I feel like this play is, you know, about my people um, and it's dealing with my passions and my interests. Often we see, we don't see D&D &D on the stage or on the screen in a positive light and typically we're being mocked, but here it's something cool, it's something fascinating and I like that part. Um, you know, the play's reference to d and I just think it's fun, I love that. One of the things that I'm excited about, about the visual elements, is uh, this This show is known for its fight sequences, its stage combat sequences. Because um, in Dungeons and Dragons, you have to fight, you have to fight monsters and, and demons and, and things like that. And so the stage combat sections in the original stage play were gigantic. And you can't really do that on the computer. So we've created like these comic book storyboard fights that hopefully will convey that same sort of epic battle sequence just on your computer screens. For choreography, it's definitely, I'm choreographing probably like the same as I would, obviously with the exception of COVID things. So we have to make sure that they'll be able to be seen um, because they don't have like a whole stage now, they just have a little window. So I have to make sure they're not moving all around the stage and that they are staying in one spot, kind of. I am worried about some of the technical aspects. Any number of things can go wrong with, uh, you know, having all the actors on a, a Zoom call, essentially. You know, sometimes people freeze or people drop out of a call or there there's glitches. And then, you know, we have to assemble those, those 20 feeds and then run them through a program and then stream that to the audience. And so there are just a lot of pieces that have to sync up with, with um, with the visual aspect of the show and as well as the audio aspect of the show. 
Luckily, we have several team members who who are experts in these areas, and I'm really I'm really leaning on and relying on their expertise to to find the best the best avenues for how we should approach each each part of this process. I just want to see how it's gonna look on like throughout the software through Zoom that they set up. I can only see how it looks in person. And so it'll be really cool. And I really hope that, you know, the emotion and, you know, what I've choreographed into it really transfers through the screen. There are um, a lot of really funny moments and there are a lot of really tender moments. Um, and I just, I think that, yeah, it's a, it's a fun story to be, to be working on.